Right. Now, an important part of what makes this consensus different is that we are doing our part to give back. That is to a bunch of worthy causes, all of them focused on COVID-19 relief. And we're doing so in a very crypto fashion. Check this video out for more details. Whenever we donate to charities and pay for public goods, we're voting with our money, right? Would you want individuals with the most money to have the final say on where that cash is going? Quadratic fundraising, a groundbreaking new idea from some of the leading minds in economics and blockchain, solves that problem. Unlike one-to-one -one matching funding, where a $1 donation leads to $1 in funding, quadratic funding adds democratic principles, prioritizes the voice of the individual, and makes every dollar count. In short, everyone has a voice in this form. How does it work? A donor offering a dollar-for-dollar -dollar pool of matching grants across a selection of charities can use a quadratic formula to amplify the voices of the many toward their preferred charities. It skews the matching fund towards those causes that attract the broadest spread of contributions. The contributions are recorded and tallied up to come up with the total amount of matchable funds. Then a separate sum is made from the square roots of each contributing amount. The sum of those numbers are squared to devise and assign a quadratic weighting to each charity. Each quadratic weighting is expressed as a percentage of the total to determine how much of the available matching funds each charity will receive. In this case, Charity 1, which achieved the highest breadth of contributions, receives the most money, even though it raised the same amount as Charity 2 and less than Charity 3. By ensuring small funders have as much clout as big funders when it comes to the donation targets, quadratic funding makes sure every voice is heard. As part of New York Blockchain Week, Coindesk is partnering with Gitcoin and the Ethereal Summit to contribute matching funds to continue the use of quadratic funding-based campaigns in the context of COVID-19 response. Please give today. To learn more about this, we're joined by Glenn Whale and Vitalik Buterin. Glenn's a political economist and social technologist at Microsoft's Office of the Chief Technology Officer and the founder and chair of the Radical X Exchange Foundation. Vitalik is known to many of our audience as the founder of Ethereum. Along with uh, Harvard PhD candidate Zoe Hitzig, they co-authored a paper on quadratic funding last year that led Gitcoin and others to adopt this innovative approach to grants. And now it's part of the consensus distributed fundraise. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, Glenn, uh, back to the fundraiser from, from Coindesk, Ethereal and Gitcoin. Beyond raising money, what do you hope to see achieved through this particular effort? I think this is a great opportunity to see this incredibly important uh, new way of trying to use decentralized principles to do egalitarian funding brought to a much broader audience. And I think if we have the success that I hope we'll have with this, um, that it will be a key tool, uh, not just for Gitcoin, not just for the blockchain world, but for governments and civil society organizations around the world in this time when we need to get digital input on public goods uh, to do all sorts of things from funding artists to uh, funding local infrastructure investments and uh, testing campaigns, all the sorts of infrastructure that we need to get through this difficult time. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, Glenn. Hey, it's Zach, by the way. Nice to see you. Um, so beyond, you know, beyond the matching grants, obviously, you mentioned public goods funding, which is really the interesting part of this approach to getting things done. Give me a few concrete examples. You mentioned sort of like infrastructure funding, arts funding. Give me some examples of how you see this playing out in the real world. Well, I think one of the areas that I'm most concerned about is, you know, so many of the artists, so many of the cultural leaders depend on in-person performances to earn a living. And in this new time, obviously that's not possible. Um, and yet we need cultural production more than we've ever needed it because um, people uh, you know, in order to maintain morale, in order to uh, even comply with um, the distancing orders and so forth, need to have a sense of community. And uh, we need to support those people so that they can live um, now that they don't have employment. And I think uh, some sort of Patreon or other crowdfunding style system is critical for that. But those things are not funded uh, sufficiently now. And 
they put too much power in the hands of a few wealthy people. And quadratic funding gives a really powerful mechanism for, on the one hand, people to be empowered as individuals, you know, smaller individuals to support the community organizations they need. And on the other hand, for donors who do have those funds to say, look, I understand that I should not be in charge. It's not my job to make all these choices. I want to empower the community. Um, and now they have a mechanism for doing that that has a really strong foundation in you know, economic theory and um, uh, the, the latest in social technology. Got it. And, you know, Vitalik, turning to you, looking at some of the, you know, the blockchain provisions in here that make this all click, you know, one could imagine, you know, a risk scenario where individuals game this system by using multiple aliases, almost like a kind of like a Sybil attack here. Um, mm -hmm. So again, Vitalik, like when you were designing this, what sort of technical provisions were you putting in place to make sure that uh, problems like that were solved for? Um, yeah, so and I've definitely written a lot about this, um, uh, right? One of the challenges with in both quadratic funding and also kind of voting and kind of any other mechanism that doesn't look like something that we would traditionally conceive of as uh, being a market um, always has these problems, right? That it, it depends on some kind of model of identity. Like it needs to have some way of uh, kind of recognizing the difference between one person with a million dollars and um, a thousand people with a with thousand dollars each and a million people with one dollar each um, and it needs to also have some way of uh, kind of minimizing uh, kind of co or either minimizing or detecting and kind of the level of collusion that's going on right like basically if you have um, an, a thousand accounts that are all kind of contributing toward the same thing but actually it's one person kind of directly pulling the strings then that's something that should be distinguished from kind of, uh, somehow uh, from a thousand people who kind of actually genuinely support the same cause. And so, I mean, for identity, there's a lot of uh, different solutions. There's definitely no perfect solution, um, but the blockchain space is one of the spaces where there are like uh, 559 you know, like different uh, group or whatever number of different groups that are trying to come up with kind of quote identity solutions. And so. Yep. I, mean, I don't think there's a perfect fix for identity, I and mean, I think there's going to be a kind of gradient of uh, solutions that um, kind of take different trade-offs uh, between a level of security, a level of decentralization, level of inclusiveness, and, uh, and some of these different trade-offs. Um, and Gitcoin uh, has been doing kind of quadratic funding rounds within the Ethereum ecosystem and starting to kind of branch out um, a bit outside with um, its you know, first uh, COVID-19 health round and now this one. Um, is uh, doing a lot of work on uh, looking into that. And then for, to solve these kind of anti-collusion problems, and there has been a lot of cryptographic research in the last couple of decades about how to design these uh, kind of you know, online systems in such a way that you can't uh, kind of prove how you contributed to arbitrary third parties. Um, and this is to prevent uh, basically the equivalent of vote buying and vote selling and coercion and these things. And people have thought about this in the context of uh, kind of more traditional elections quite a bit. Um, and I mean, one of the challenges, of course, is that if we go to kind of traditional, you know, national scale elections, the problem is just kind of too big and, impo and important and the risks are too high to start deploying these kinds of things all at once. But, but Vitalik, just a, just a quick question, because we have, we have to wrap this up real quick here. But I mean, does, is Ethereum itself, if this is where it's going to happen, going to be able to scale? I mean, uh, this is a, a question we don't get to speak to very often. ETH 2.0, can you give us a line really coming in July? Are we ready for it? I think so, yeah. And I think uh, Ethereum 2.0 has uh, test nets already. And uh, so there is the Topaz uh, test net and the Shoise test net about uh, a week ago that has uh, three or even four um, client implementations now. So that's the first phase of uh, ETH 2.0 that's bringing in proof of stake. And then sh and sharding coming soon after. There's also rollups that are adding scalability. Um, the Optimism team recently announced a demo with uh, Synthetics where they're doing an optimistic rollup and that can theoretically scale to over a thousand transactions a second, even on the existing Ethereum chain. So there's a lot of work on scalability. There's also a lot of work on the cryptography and privacy that will make some of the kind of technology that I uh, just uh, talked about actually possible to implement some um, on the uh, Ethereum public chain. So uh, it's it's moving forward on all fronts. Great. All right, well, we need to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you so much, Vitalik and Glenn, uh, for, for this great idea and for supporting this project. Uh, we'll catch up with you some other time. Thank you. Thanks for your support. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.
So uh, as you just heard from our distinguished guests here, the charity effort at Consensus this year is using quadratic funding so that we can match funds from Coindesk and its partners to 12 nonprofits that we're working with this year. And the goal is lofty. We're looking to raise $100,000. So uh, there's, a, there's a couple things you got to know about the charity effort this year. As a part of it, we're doing a big music show at 5 o'clock Eastern time to unwind a little bit and have some fun. So this is going to feature Akon, Skip Marley, Haley Smalls, Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind, and a couple more folks uh, who's, you know, and they're, they're performing so that proceeds from this show's sponsor, which is eToro, by the way, will go to the same charity drive. So the question is, how do you, yes, you, get involved in this uh, noble effort? So check out the NYBW Gives hashtag on social media. And you'll find our, your way to the 12 participating charities on the Coindesk website. You're also looking at them right now. We're partnering with the United Way, Doctors Without Borders, No Kid Hungry, and many more. Uh, cool thing, some are even accepting donations in crypto. So uh, that's, uh, that's another avenue to donate and uh, donate to a worthy cause. So uh, we've already raised...